I'm Delaney France. And I'm Humana Garcia, and you're watching the BBN Weekly News. This week, we have Hannah getting an inside look on the Western Kansas Child Advocacy Center and Annie on the topic of Reality U. Sage will be catching us up on Beaver Wrestling and Thad on weather. Let's turn it over to Hannah to learn more about the Western Kansas Child Advocacy Center. The Western Kansas Child Advocacy Center is an organization that strives to create awareness and alertness towards abused or neglected children. Their goal is to create a safe and comfortable environment for these children. I spoke with Haley Knoll, the development director here at the Scott County CAC to find out a little more information. Hello Scott City High School, my name is Haley Knoll. I am the development director for the Western Kansas Child Advocacy Center. We cover 34 counties, and one of those counties is in your county, Scott County. And so I'm brought here today by one of your interviewers, and I thank you very much for this opportunity. So some of the questions she asked me, she wanted to know what my job entailed. So I'm the development director, and basically my job is fundraising. Um, it sounds a little more exciting than it is, the hardest part of my job is asking people for money and donations, but it's also the most rewarding because in that I usually get to tell a little bit about what we do as an agency and throw in some, um, I don't want to call them success stories, but kind of success stories. I get to share some examples of kids that come through our agency that have a positive experience through or from a traumatic experience. And so it shows the positive work that our agency does. So that is definitely very rewarding. Starting with a forensic interview, the WKCAC will then refer the child or their family to the appropriate services. What made me pursue this job? I've been in this work for about 20 years in the form of victim services. I started out as a police officer in Garden City, Kansas. I retired as a detective and my forte there was um, people crimes, sexual assault, domestic violence, that sort of thing. And in that, I worked a lot of child abuse cases in the form of physical and sexual abuse. So my career progressed. Once I left law enforcement, I went into adult victim services, and now I'm in child victim services. And it's really just been a passion of mine to pull anyone or help anyone out of an abusive situation, especially kids who don't have a voice. This organization was started by Kelly Robbins and David Filer in 2004 and has since then been a helpful addition to Western Kansas counties. Something that people need to realize about our agency, the Western Kansas Child Advocacy Center, we provide services for about 800 kids a year. That's a lot and that is in within our 34 counties and that it that ranges anywhere from physical abuse sexual abuse those services um, start usually with a law enforcement officer or department of children and family dcf and those referrals come through our office in the form of hey this basically this kid needs help whether it be for prosecution or for therapy our agency has licensed therapists. We also have a doctor that does um, exams as needed. And so our agency does a lot more than what people really realize. And if you haven't seen our agency, come by and take a look. It will blow your mind. And I think you may have an understanding as to why kids leave. And sometimes they ask, can we come back? And they can come back anytime they want to or need to. The most rewarding part of my job is stuff like this. We get to tell people who we are, what we do, and why we do it. And the why is really what keeps this agency growing and what keeps the community continuing to donate. Because we help kids who, they just, they don't have a voice. Think about you and your own situations. Do you get to tell your parents what to do? No, imagine if there's abuse involved on any level. So the why is really why we're all here, because we love what we do and why we do it. Thank you, Haley, for letting me interview you. Donations to the agency are always accepted and greatly appreciated. If you would like to donate or learn more about this life-saving agency, visit their website at wkcac.com. Have a great weekend. For BBN News, I'm Hannah Furrow. 
Thanks, Hannah. Let's pop over to Annie to see what Reality U is all about. Where do you see yourself in 20 years? The sophomores will be participating in an event that will give them a glimpse of what that could look like. Reality U began in 2018 and has continued every year since. To learn more, I talked to Mr. Beyer and Katie Eisenhower. I asked them what Reality U is and how it benefits Scott City students. Pat Beyer, I'm the principal of this high school. I am the executive director of Scott County Development Committee, Inc. Um, I have been in that position for 13 plus years. I asked them what Reality U is and how it benefits Scott City students. Reality U is just a program that they bring in every year for our eighth grade students, sophomore students that um, gives students a real life look at perspective of life um, and what, what it's like after high school. Um, they, they assign you with a job based on your GPA. So if you don't have a very good GPA, you don't get a very high paying job. If you get a really good GPA, you can go up to a higher paying job. So it kind of <clears throat> lets reality sink in a little bit, but they also, I mean, they give you um, just tons of life scenarios. You have to buy a car, you have to have a payment, you have to um, pay your bills, you have to, um, you know, pay for your kids that you have your babies. They have a little baby that they walk around with and everything else as well. So just kind of throws a real life scenario at these students so they get a picture of, um, you know, what life is like when you have to decide, oh, can I afford a house? Can I afford a car? Can I afford this um, with my budget and whatnot? And can I afford kids? I mean, so it, to me, it's a, it's a really cool thing that, um, that we do that kind of gives the kids a real life perspective on life. Reality U is a program that we stumbled uh, upon, mostly because one of my colleagues had tried it. Um, but it is a canned program, so essentially a community like mine can just essentially write a check and they come and do everything. That's the background of it. But what it provides is a snapshot into the um, life of a of an eighth grader and a sophomore or a sophomore um, looking at them at age 26. Again, I just think it prepares them um, for life, you know, after school or gives them a, a, a screenshot of what it, what it looks like. I mean, it's not going to hit everything that you come into because, of course, life throws all kinds of things at you uh, when you're a grown up. But uh, I don't I don't sometimes I think kids right now don't think about life after high school or what right now could affect them later, including their grades or, you know, getting in trouble or arrested or anything like that. Just anything they do right now can affect them later on in life. And so, I, again, I, it just throws a snapshot perspective at them so they kind of realize, you know, kind of maybe what they're doing now, maybe they want to change and um, do better so they can do better later on in life. It's a reality check and, that, and a little bit of a snippet of what life is really going to be like so that they're just you know, not procrastinating quite so much, not being so needy. Um, maybe become a better employee for your employer too, because you understand what he's having to go through to pay you. I also talked to Adam Kadavy, a member from the community who volunteers for the Reality U event. I asked him about why he volunteers for the event and what feedback he received from students. I chose just to kind of help uh, with uh, kids in the community and help out and just kind of be a part of it. And it's part of a good community service to, to be involved with. The, about the only feedback I do have is during the, the sessions there. And it's amazing how much they, the, the first time around, the eighth graders, how much, I mean, how difficult it can be managing a budget. And then the sophomore year, it's like a, it's a good reminder like oh yeah you know and it's it's a good learning lesson on uh, budgeting for everything and and you know even when you get older in age you still have to do that and it's like oh yeah i need to do that i need to save some money back case of emergency and for bbn i'm annie talbert thanks annie now we have sage giving us updates on beaver sports <laughs>
SCHS Wrestling has hit the match for the 2022-2023 season. With their first few meets completed, I spoke with Houston Frank to get a better understanding of what this season will hold. Their first meet was last Saturday and saw first and second place finishes for the girls and boys respectively. I thought we did pretty good. Um, some people, you know, losses that you wouldn't expect, but we came out on top at the end. So for me, uh, it was a lot easier than what I expected it to be. I thought I was going to have a ranked kid. He ended up going to a different weight class. So I was prepared for a lot more than what I had to do. The team has showed great effort, hoping to repeat and expand on last year's success. Uh, some good things. Everybody gets along. You know, we don't have any problems. Uh, we work hard at practice every day. Or we just keep getting better every day. With the first couple meets out of the way, all eyes are on the remainder of the season. Big tournaments like Lexington, Abilene, the Rocky Welton, those are always just fun tournaments. For the team, uh, win regionals uh, for myself, win regionals. Uh, it'd be nice if we could qualify everybody for state. But, and for myself, I guess, get as far as I can at state. The team as a whole looks forward to a great year, and make sure you get out and support them. With that, for BBN, I'm Sage Jackline. Thanks, Sage. And to wrap up this week's newscast, let's hear from Thad about this weekend's weather. Looks like there are a few clouds in our future this weekend. Today is going to be cloudy with a high of 53 degrees and a low of 25. Saturday is going to be sunny with a high of 55 and a low of 24 degrees. Sunday is partly cloudy with highs around 57 degrees and a low around 35 degrees. For more BBN weather, I'm Thaddeus Butler. Thanks, Thad. And with that, I'm Jimena Garcia. And I'm Delaney France. Have an amazing weekend and go Beavers.